All right, so um, just to get started, this is uh, this is going to be a um, basically the work that uh, that I've that I've done integrating CloudStack with OpenStack. And so, just to get started, um, my name is Will Stevens. I'm the lead developer at uh, CloudOps, and uh, I'm a developer, so I work with code. And uh, looking at the looking at that list of stuff that I work with, for the most part, you'll notice that PowerPoint is not on there. So I apologize if I am not uh, an expert with PowerPoint. Um, some of the recent development stuff that I've been doing is uh, is working with uh, the Zen Server API to to build uh, custom reports for customers um, to give them a little bit more information about uh, about the data in our in our systems. So, who are we? Um, CloudOps uh, was founded in 2005, and uh, we we build and manage private and hybrid clouds uh, for our customers, and we focus mainly on um, managing operations, uh, cloud operations for our customers. And we use a we use a lot of uh, of Citrix based uh, technologies. Um, we we use CloudStack and Cloud Platform. Um, we use Zen Server extensively, and uh, we we really. Um, we really try to, to work with as many of the open source and open core solutions as we can, and uh, especially the, um, the 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 supported ones, the um, uh, the ones with uh, with that are commercially supported. Because commercial support is an important thing when when working with uh, with open source software. Um, so this project. The project that uh, where where this integration actually became important uh, was a project uh, for Cloud.ca. Um, Cloud.ca is launching a Canadian-owned public cloud in Canada, and uh, they really want to focus on on using the best uh, best of breed for um, compute and object store. And so they'll be launching the an object store originally, like uh, first, and then after that they will launch a uh, compute service using CloudStack. So they chose CloudStack for compute and uh, and open and OpenStack Swift for object storage, and they do not actually work together. Um, Right now, it's it's not something that uh, that has been built already. So, just a little bit of history here. Um, Swift is a is an Apache license, massively st uh, scalable, redundant storage system. It gives you a lot of a lot of flexibility in um, in keeping your keeping your data redundant and and gives you gives you a really quality service um, for object store. It's been being used at Rackspace for a long time um, with, uh, with their object store. Um, CloudStack already has some integration with, uh, with Swift uh, via the, their secondary storage. They allow you to do VM snapshots um, onto Swift as well as uh, template images. But what's what CloudStock does not actually give you access to is the ability to have the CloudStack users actually use Swift as an object store. They they really can only the CloudStack users can really only use it as a as a secondary storage or a uh, another another device almost. So. What's actually needed here to to make an integration happen between CloudStack and and Swift? Um, the first thing is that Swift needs to be able to authenticate the CloudStack users um, in order for the CloudStack users to be able to actually use Swift as a service. Um, and this is implemented via CSAuth or Moth. Um, both of these. Are are projects that uh, I developed um, during during this um, 
this endeavor. Um, I'll be going into more detail about everything on this slide. So um, uh, if you guys have questions at any point, get them get them in, and uh, and I'll leave a lot of time at the end to uh, to cover to cover the, the answers. Um, the next piece would be um, once once you have your users using Swift, you need to be able to track their usage and be able to get their usage out into your billing system. Otherwise, you're not actually going to be able to uh, to monetize the the usage of Swift uh, in your system. And the final thing is you're going to need to be able to integrate Swift into the Cloud Stack UI. Um, and the this this is going to be something that is going to require some custom development and uh, I'll get into that a little bit more um, as we go forward. So just to get here, so what is Cloud uh, What is CS Auth, um, and, and where does it sit? What does it uh, What does it do? Um, so CS Auth is actually um, a, a middleware that is in Swift uh, that you can. So Swift allows you to to add middlewares um, and um, and call them as you need them. And so CS Auth is a, is a Swift authentication middleware. And it allows for Swift to authenticate CloudStack users via the CloudStack API. The, the middleware uses a caching mechanism um, that essentially what it does is it caches a CloudStack identity in Swift. Um, and this is really nice because you don't actually have to worry about um, trying to sync databases between uh, between Swift and another authentication uh, system. Um, you you get to take advantage of CloudStack's user management and um, and not really have to worry about um, about trying to synchronize users between Swift and CloudStack. Um, So CS Auth has, has pretty much all the functionality you would expect from an authentication um, middleware. Um, it allows for ACL uh, through a role-based uh, um, mechanism. Um, you can allow public access to your, uh, to your objects um, or containers. Um, there has been a middleware that that was built for for Swift called Swift three, which allows Swift to handle S three requests, and so we can plug in uh, directly with that middleware as well, and and handle S three requests through the authentication middleware as well, um, because because we're using a caching mechanism and the uh, the uh, identity is being stored in Swift. Every time that a request comes in, it doesn't have to jump over across the network to CloudStack and make sure that the that the user is a valid user. Um, it gets to pretty much locally say, "Hey, is is this person is this identity uh, um, real, and can we give them access?" And so. It, it takes the the expensive uh, aspect of the network out of this out of the equation, which is which is very important. Um, when you start getting massive load on on your system, um, that that network latency it becomes a, a huge bottleneck. And so this caching mechanism is uh, is really important for being able to scale. So this uh, middleware basically works out of the box with pretty much anything that works with Swift. Um, so Cyberduck, um, Swift Bench, all the different things that you would expect, um, uh, s tools that you would expect to work with Swift. Um, as a little note here, um, if, if you don't feel that um, developing a UI is, is going to be something that you can do, Cyberduck is actually a pretty good interface for Swift. Um, 
if if you're looking for a poor man's solution, Cyberduck is pretty good. So when requests come in, come in to Swift, uh, they're going to come through the authentication layer, and there's going to be two main uh, types of requests that come into Swift, um, and then there is S3, which is handled separately. Um, the first type of, of request is a request for authentication, and you are, you're passed in credentials. Um, the other type of request is, um, is basically a request for resources assuming that they have already requested authentication, and that is going to come in with a token. Um, now, S3 is slightly different. It, all the requests come in with a API key and a signature, and you essentially have to, to decrypt it to make sure that it is, valid, it is a valid request when it comes in. So when requests come in, they, um, we check whether or not we have an identity already cached for for the, uh, the, the person who is, who's requesting it. If we do, we pass it right on to authorization and, and keep going. If we don't, then we need to make a call to CloudStack um, via the CloudStack API and, and get an identity for the user who is, um, who is making the request. Of course, once we get the identity, we need to cache it so that as the next time that they come, either with credentials or with a token, that we're going to be able to automatically say, yes, I know who this person is, and, and pass them through, and not actually have to hit CloudStack again. So there's a couple different types of, um, of requests. There's going to be the requests where the user is a user who is, who is trying to um, add or look at their, what they own. And there's also going to be anonymous requests um, who are going to be requesting um, containers that are public. Um, and so the, those types of requests can both get passed through. And the authorization layer in the authentication middleware will determine whether or not uh, the, the request can go forward or um, or it gets kicked back as uh, you're not allowed to actually access this. So a quick little, uh, quick little look at just what is actually involved in CS Auth. Um, if you have an understanding of what CloudStack actually offers, um, you'll probably notice right away that there is no real concept of a token that is already created um, uh, in CloudStack. So since Swift depends on a token um, to be passed back and forth on, on multiple requests, um, we need to be able to generate a token kind of on the fly and make it re reproducible and, um, and make sure that it's going to be secure in the system. Um, so we do that by using the CloudStack secret key and API key and we hash them together. Um, and this will, this will create the token. Um, and so the next thing, all right, you have a token. So you have the credentials that you need in order to be able to make a request to the system. But where are you actually requesting? Um, what, what URL are you trying to hit in order to be able to, like, where, are your, where do your containers live? Um, and that's going to be in inside CS Auth, it's the account URL. Um, and that is made up of the storage URL plus uh, essentially the CloudStack account. Um, for cloud.ca, they, they had, a, they had a, a requirement that um, every account was unique. Um, and there was essentially, there could be more, more than one user per account, but the, in Swift, each account had um, uh, was essentially analogous to a user in um, uh, in Swift. So you could give different multiple users access to that same data in Swift, um, and that would essentially be handled by the roles, which I'll, I'll cover in a moment. Um, 
but um, for the most part, it's a one-to-one -one relationship between account and a Swift account, uh, a Cloud Stack account and a Swift account. Um, so the main the main heart of CS Auth is is its identity is the identity, um, and this is the identity that is stored in in Swift um, to represent a um, a Cloud Stack uh, a Cloud Stack user, and you can see on the screen that uh, what's being stored in in this identity there's there's actually two different identities but for the most part this is the the identity um, the since s3 is handled slightly different we have to uh, we have to associate a secret key with an identity in order for us to be able to validate requests coming in uh, for s3 um, so we uh, so that is that's handled at, at an application layer and not actually handled um, in the uh, in the identity object. Um, so this is this is the 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 actual identity that gets stored in Swift. Um, and you'll notice that in roles that you have the the Cloud Stack account as as one of the roles um, to uh, um, for this identity and. This this actually allows for us to be able to do um, to have multiple users in a, in an account have access to the same account. Um, in in CloudStack, there's the there's the concept of projects, and uh, this is going forward. This is this is how um, uh, projects are going to be. Um, are going to be handled. So technically, you'd be able to give access to a different account um, via the uh, via a role. Um, so we've talked about CS auth, and we mentioned moth at the very beginning. And so, what what's the difference? Why would I choose one or the other for for integrating Cloud Stack with Swift? Um, CS Auth was the was the original implementation of uh, of getting Swift and Cloud Stack to talk to each other and uh, and make things work. Um, Moth is a project that I'm working on with Swift Stack, um, and the idea is to reuse the identity caching mechanism which I developed for CS Auth. Um, and implement it in a way that it can be extensible um, and, and we can have other other people write extensions using the same identity or, or their own identities um, but but still make it still make it work with as a as an auth middleware for uh, Swift and uh, so this this will enable Swift to be used as, uh, with Active Directory or SAML or LDAP or pretty much any authentication um, uh, back end. Um, and so it's still very much in development. The, the Cloud Stack implementation has, has been built uh, already and it comes default with Moth. Um, but um, we have not tested it in scale yet. Uh, we're still working on on building extensions to make it uh, to make it um, more useful in the community for for uh, for other other systems as well. Um, so that was a bit of a divergence from uh, from this, but uh, I figured that I would bring it up and and uh, and let you know about it as well. All right. So moving on to Usage. Um, S logging is a middleware in Swift that has been used in production for for quite some time at Rackspace, um, but unfortunately, it produces usage in logs, and the logs are not easily. You can't really uh, consume the logs very well, and most billing systems will not have a clue what to do with the logs. Um, so 
I developed a Swift middleware called uh, Swift Usage that it, it basically simplifies the handling of this usage data um, that is being collected for, for Swift um, and it, it makes it simpler to get it into a billing system. So Swift usage is made up of two parts. There is a the S logging processor and parser parses through all the logs and processes them and and makes sure that uh, like and make sure that it it uh, covers all the usage and uh, it aggregates information uh, if there is more than one log that has this, has um, uh, usage um, it will it will it will put them to put the usage together to to be um, um, to be stored in in MongoDB objects um, so that they can be accessed more easily. Um, and the second part of the of Swift usage is a REST service um, to expose the usage data uh, via a, a a normal secured REST service. Um, and for this, we're using uh, an API key and signature mechanism, very similar to what uh, S3 uses, um, where you have a, a secret key on both ends and you generate a signature using the secret key and um, decrypt it when it gets to the other side. Um, so that is the, uh, that's, that's pretty much Swift usage in a nutshell. It will, um, it will collect all the data and then expose it as a service and then your billing system will call the rest service in order to um, in order to actually use the usage data so that leaves one major piece left and that's an actual UI um, and that's where things get a little bit more tricky because um, CloudStack does not have a an easy way to extend the UI. Um, you can see here that uh, that there is a, an initial implementation um, for a UI in in the context of CloudStack, um, but there's definitely custom development required in order to be able to to implement something like this. Um, so, what are the main challenges with uh, with developing a UI for uh, for for this uh, for this project? Um, CloudStack uses a single page implementation in the UI, um, and so it uses a lot of AJAX, um, and it puts pretty much all the DOM on the page at one time, and then uses AJAX to show you uh, what it needs to show you at any given time. Um, this means that there's not a real easy way to to um, to create um, sections um, and and have and have them display um, uh, it, it, partials partials are are a little bit hard to do um, so it's uh, it basically means that you're going to um, take the existing cloud stack UI and you're going to basically fork it and and build uh, build whatever you need um, in your own fork. And as long as you're smart about how you do that, um, if you use Git, for example, and uh, and you you bring in the uh, the source as a you, you you have your branches depend on on the actual CloudStack UI. Um, you can you can get around you can get around some some of those problems pretty easily, um, but uh, that's that's something that uh, uh, that would be a little bit more in depth to to cover. Um, some more issues uh, is when you're trying to represent an object store, in particular in this case uh, Swift, as a file system in a UI. There gets to be some some trickiness, as you can see in this uh, in the the previous uh, slide here. That I have a container, and then I have pseudo folders. Um, it, it appears to be folders in in this um, in this UI, but in actuality, in the object store, you have a container and you have an object. 
So the object is actually, in this case for README, is made up of my folder one forward slash my folder one one sla forward slash README. And so from a UI perspective, it can be, excuse me, it can be a little bit difficult to manage the pseudo folders and uh, uh, create, delete pseudo folders and then add objects to the right ones. Um, and so that, that can be a little bit tricky when trying to develop an, uh, a UI for, for this. Um, depending on how you, how you plan to upload your files into, um, uh, through the UI, um, large files can sometimes cause a problem. If you're using Flash, for example, um, uh, it, it can fall down on some large files. And uh, so it's something to be aware of. Um, having some having the ability to um, to break up your files and and then store them in the uh, in the object store is is something that is um, is is interesting and is being worked on but is not quite there yet um, another thing is most modern browsers um, really only allow you to post data. Uh, they don't allow you to put data. Whereas most of the modern REST APIs, uh, if you're going to be putting data into the system and you're not doing an edit, they expect you to be using it, a, you doing a put. Um, so this requires some pre-processing of the data w when you submit it uh, in order to to actually uh, massage the um, the the post the um, submit type. Um, so at this point, we have covered the majority of the um, of the use cases that uh, that were that were important for the initial implementation for cloud.ca um, and. Uh, so the next question would be like, can, can I use can can you as a as someone who is uh, interested in, in potentially making CloudStack and OpenStack work together, um, can you guys use any of this? And the answer is yes. Um, the the original CS auth and Moth are both open source as well as as uh, Swift usage, and they're available at our at our GitHub. Um, you can. You can learn more about what we do at CloudOps uh, at our website and and by following us on Twitter, and that's the that's the majority of uh, of my presentation. I wanted to leave lots of time for um, uh, for questions um, with just one final slide. Um, we think that having uh, open platforms, being able to work work together well is is very important and so this is a little slide that uh, that we like to because it really is something we don't we don't like the idea of having silos um, of, uh, of information and CloudStack has done an amazing job with with their compute um, their compute functionality and it's a shame to to have that as a silo of its own and not have it integrate directly with object store since that's something that most users are going to want if they're um, if they are going to be paying for a uh, um, for for services uh, of this type so we really like the uh, the idea of being able to to pick the best of breeds of the open open source community and uh, and make them work together um, so with that, I will uh, open it up to questions, and uh, we'll go from there. Thanks, Will. So uh, the first question we have for you today is, when you were developing around CloudStack, what, where did you go first? Right? How did you get the bootstrapped on it? How did you get started? What resources did you use? Um, that's a good question. Um, they have they have pretty good documentation for uh, for getting things going. Uh, the truth of the matter is that we have uh, we have people on our team who 
are who are very strong who who've been working with Citrix for a really long time and are very strong with um, uh, with CloudStack. So I wasn't actually exposed to that as as much um, because because we had resources to be able to to get um, to get things up and running without without really requiring um, a an initial startup phase. Great, thanks. And that, that probably is not the best answer. Oh, that, to that that's question. fine. And for the, for the audience, um, in the last session of the day, I'll I'll have a slide that I'll um, uh, put up for you that talks about um, uh, references where you can go for more information. Um, there's another question as well, um, a, a specific technical question, and that is how many total keys are generated across the entire system for a single user and a single administrator. How many keys are generated across the entire system for a single user and a single? Um, it should be one. Um, the so each user in CloudStack. So in CloudStack, when you create an account, um, you're going to uh, create an account and then create a user. And in the user section, you're going to have a generate API keys um, uh, for that user. And so all requests are going to be using the API keys that are generated in CloudStack. Um, so that is the, that is the um, those are the only keys, and they're only going to be used. They're, they're going to be used throughout the system for the lifetime of that user's um, uh, experience with the application. The slight um, like deviation to that is that. Swift usage does not use CloudStack um, uh, API keys uh, because Swift usage could technically be used for Swift alone. Uh, it has its own way of managing API and secret keys, um, and so uh, Swift usage and and you don't you don't want the um, you don't want your end users to be able to query Swift usage anyways. So you wouldn't want you wouldn't want to be using the um, the CloudStack uh, API and, and secret keys at, in Swift usage because you wouldn't want to be giving them access the them access to the usage. Uh, it's more of the admin or billing system where you would create API and secret keys sp specifically for um, for the people that you want to have access to your usage. Great. Thanks. And then one last question. You've worked in both CloudStack and OpenStack, and, and the user or uh, attendee was just wondering, do you have any comments about, um, you know, either stack or, you know, what it was like to um, work between the two, level of difficulty? Yeah, it's interesting. Um, the the open source community is, in general is, is a very fun place to work. Um, and on CloudStack, you're going to, you, they, they don't have quite as many people on, on the uh, uh, IRC, for example, but they have a very active mailing list, and they, you can, like, keep up to date uh, very easily there, and that's very nice. Um, uh, in OpenStack, they have, a, they have a huge IRC community, and there's so many people that are, that are willing to help that it's that it's nice uh, that that's that's a really nice resource um, and I would absolutely like I absolutely recommend um, if you're doing development in this arena uh, go on IRC the people are nice just uh, be very pointed about what your questions are and and they will do they will do their best to help you um, and uh, in general um, it's a uh, it's it's very enjoyable to to work on on both of these products. Um, the uh, the CloudStack system has been in place for a long time, and they've done a very nice job um, putting together a compute layer. Um, and the uh, the Swift community and the and the code behind Swift has been very strong for a long time, and it's. Uh, it's also a very nice, uh, a very nice piece of software to work with. So, um, yeah, it's uh, it's it's a, it's a good situation.
to work with them. Both. Great. Great. Well, Will, with that, I think we're out of questions for today. I'd like to thank you for um, sharing your experience uh, doing this work with us. And um, on, on behalf of the CloudStack community, uh, thank you for um, you know helping our audience understand that there are you know there are ways to extend CloudStack um, and integrate with other open source efforts. Thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you for the opportunity to uh, to to uh, to talk with the with your audience.